Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making an ABS adjustable frame clamp. Well, on Friday's woodworking edition of the show, we made some of these, and these would be shop made jig knobs. And it just basically showed you that you don't necessarily have to purchase the commercially available ones to have jig knobs and that sort of thing in your shop. Today's show is no different, as we're going to utilize last week's project and make a frame clamp. Now, some of you have noticed the frame clamp that I use and it is a commercially available one and you've made comments showing how much you like it etc etc and I just thought why not make our own version and that's where we're gonna start today and we're gonna head over to the table saw and start off with a block of ABS plastic well after flattening the ABS blank I am trimming off the end to make sure that it's absolutely square. And I cannot stress enough here, you are making a clamp or a frame clamp that is going to squeeze everything in together at 45 degree angles to make perfect 90s. Guys, check the blade on your saw to ensure that it's at 90 degrees to your table. Extremely important when making any jig or clamp or that sort of thing. So now that we have that done, we just need to do just a little bit of layout on the ABS block. Well, this is our flattened side, as is this and this. So this is where our marking is going to be. And what we need to do essentially is take out this entire corner of our block here. And for that, from the bottom, we're gonna measure up one inch. And we're just gonna draw that line there. And then from this end, we're also gonna come in one inch. This will be the size of the notch that we're taking out of this square corner here, one inch by one inch. We will also be making cuts or marks here rather at the one and three quarter inch and as well on this side. So once we get that done, we're going to head over to the table saw and set things up so that using our miter fence we can raise our blade to a height of one inch and make this cut and then using our ripping fence we will rotate our piece and cut this line right here again with our blade height at one inch. Well, before we go any further, we're just going to get a small two inch square in here and we're just going to make sure that we are square all the way along on both cuts. If you're not, you need to figure out why and correct that. This one here looks good. We've got one more cut to make over at the table saw before we can cut this off of the large blank. And for that, you're going to need to set your blade at a 45 degree angle. We've set the height of our blade so that it's just going to come in contact right there in the very corner of where our two cuts join. And we're just going to cut a slight little 45 degree relief cut in that very corner. And with our blade reset back to 90 degrees, we're going to cut it off here at our one and three quarter inch mark. Then we're going to set our fence at one and three quarter and square up the whole assembly. Well, our next step in this process will be to cut them into one and one eighth of an inch wide pieces. And we're going to need four of them. Well, if you followed along so far, you should have four brackets that look just like this. And our next step is to choose one of your legs, whether it be this one or this one, it doesn't matter. On each one of our blanks, 
what I need to do is I need to drill a 13 hole right in the middle of this leg and we're going to drill it one inch deep straight down in centered on one leg of each bracket. wondering why such specific size holes and it's because at this point I'm going to use a quarter 20 tap and I'm going to tap some threads into that 1364 hole that we just drilled. Now of course the other equivalent to that is a number seven bit uh, for a quarter 20 thread but whatever you've got on hand right? So tap all the threads in all four of these corner brackets. We're now going to turn our attention to <laughs> the other leg. And what we're going to do is just like we did on the first side, we're going to mark the center here and we're going to drill a 932nd diameter hole, but it's going to be a through hole all the way through the length of this leg. Our next bit of material that we're going to need is four lengths of quarter 20 thread steel rod. What you're going to want to do is in the end that you threaded, you're going to want to thread these quarter 20 rods down into your ABS block until it stops. The thing here is that I want to glue these in place. so. I only screw them in now just to help clean the threads a little bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of CA glue down in the hole and then I'm going to screw each rod into the one end of each one of these brackets and then let the CA set up. And that would be the pieces that we need as far as this part of the project goes in order to make our frame clamp. So we'll just slide it together here. And the way it works is that the pieces that are glued onto our threaded rod, another piece will mount into the hole that we drilled through. And the whole assembly then slides on the threaded rod in order to close in on your picture frame. Now I cut these rods down to 18 inches because I just found that the three foot rods are just too cumbersome. So now how do we clamp the frame together? How does everything get held into place? Well for that I take you back to last week's woodworking show where I showed you guys how to make these wooden jig knobs and they work perfectly for a frame clamp like this. So I'm going to spin all four of these on and I'm going to cut some stock for a mock-up frame and we're going to take this for a test spin and see how it is in comparison to my original. Well, I'm just using some old pine. It's not even a frame. It's just some inch and a quarter pieces that are cut at 45s. So you just place it within the boundaries of your frame clamp here, and then you tighten up your knobs. Like you don't wanna crank them though at this point, you wanna get them all aligned. It should, for the most part, line your frame up perfectly with the 45s, and but you may need to tweak it a little bit. 
and then you just go around tightening your jig knobs one by one until you bring all of your corners together. And there you have it. An ABS frame clamp. Guys, what a great project this is, if for nothing more than the cost savings. Do the math. We use two of the actual threaded rods with two 18 inch sections, so that's $289 a piece. Not to mention that we use those jig knobs that we made in the shop, and we calculated those on the last show where all eight of them cost less than five bucks, so we're at about half because we only use four. That's $2.50. All in all, you made this frame clamp for less than 10 bucks, and of course, the store bought one is roughly 40. Guys, the adjustments on this are fantastic. If you can see which way the frame needs to go or which way it needs to adjust, it's just a matter of loosening one of the jig knobs and tightening the other. And although it does not have the quick release or the quick uh, adjust knobs or knurled knobs of the store bought one, this one definitely works and it's definitely solid. Guys, this has been a really great project, both with starting on the woodworking aspect, showing you how to make the jig knobs, and then bringing it all to fruition here this week on Alternative Tuesdays for the frame clamp. I really hope you're going to give this a try, guys. And if you need to get yourself some of that ABS, we will put a link below to Omicron Plastics. They're a good group of people, and they'll be more than happy to help you out to get some material to make one of these frame clamps for your own shop. Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed the program, and I'm going to see you next week for yet another Alternative Tuesdays.